Okay, you watch the um, foldable, and you should know those relationships. So I'm going to run, th run through some example problems just so you know what to do. But first, let's talk about radicals. Okay, um, you should remember when you did radicals back in Algebra 2, there are some things you have to know. For instance, if I give you a radical like the square root of 32, you need to be able to reduce a radical correctly. All right. Hopefully you remember how to factor a radical. So I take 32 and I'm going to factor it down. So 32 is um, 2 times 16 and 16 is 4 times 4. Okay, I can keep going down to 2 and 2 and 2 and 2, but the goal here is to find repeated numbers. And I found a set of repeated numbers. So I would reduce this radical. Every time there, a number is repeated, I can pull it out of the radical. So it would be 4 square root of 2. Now, if I kept going, some of you are uncomfortable with that. If I kept factoring to 2 and 2 and 2 and 2, that's fine. Every two twos I can take out. So I'd have 2 times 2 square root of what's left over, which was 2. And that does give me 4 square roots of 2. Either way you look at it is correct. So today, as you're solving, you're going to be asked to um, look at the radicals. And if they can be reduced, they must be reduced. Now. As you're making trig ratios as well, sometimes you'll end up with a, um, a ratio that looks something like this, 3 over the square root of 5. All right, we talked about this earlier, that you cannot leave a radical in the denominator, so you're expected to rationalize it. So I would multiply it by whatever radical there is in the top the bottom. So this is the radical in the bottom. I'm going to multiply by it. So I get 3 square roots of 3. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. This is the correct way to write this ratio, okay? You are expected to be able to rationalize radicals. If you need more practice, come and see me. Now, sometimes you might get a radical that looks like this, 5 over the square root of 32. Well, we just said that square root of 32 needs to be simplified into 5 over 4 square root of 2, right? correctly reduced is 4 squared to 2, but there's still a radical in the denominator and you still need to get rid of it. So in order to rationalize something like this, I just multiply by what's in the radical. Okay, square root of 2 only. So what I would get is 5 square roots of 2 on the top, and on the bottom I would have 4 times square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is 2. 5 square roots of 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. That would be the correct form of this ratio right here. Okay, so if you need more help re review on radicals, let me know. But you, you're expected to remember this material from Algebra 2. Now, how to find the six trick functions of a triangle. So that you're going to be given triangles and one side is missing. So you're going to have to use good old Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. Remember, C is always the hypotenuse. So in this case, I'm just going to plug it in. 5 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. 25 plus 9 equals c squared. Well, that's 34. And I have to take the square root. So c is the square root of 34. OK, so I know the three, three side lengths now. Now I'm going to do my trig ratios. Now relative to angle theta, 5 is the opposite side. a is adjacent, because it's touching it. c is the hypotenuse. All right, and if you remember your SOHCAHTOA, however you remember the ratios, let's do sine first. It's opposite over hypotenuse. So what is the opposite of my angle? Well, it's 5 over the hypotenuse is square root of 34. Now, back to what we just reviewed. Can the square root of 34 be reduced? Well, that's 2 times 17, but nothing repeats. It cannot be reduced, so I leave it as the square root of 34. However, I cannot leave the square root of 34 in the denominator, so I have to multiply by the square root of 34. Don't panic. It's just going to come out to be 5 square roots of 34 over square root of 34 times th square root of 34 is 34. It's ugly, but it's okay. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? Adjacent side is 3. Hypotenuse is square root of 34. Take a moment to rationalize it. And you're done. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. So it's 5 over 3. Ha, no rationalizing needed there. 
cosecant. Remember, that's the reciprocal of sine. So it's hypotenuse over opposite. So the hypotenuse is square root of 34 over the opposite side, which is 5. Now, if you want to make that relationship back to your sign, we had to do all this rationalizing business, right? Well, if you just want to flip something, don't flip this, this version of it. It's pretty messy. What I would say is go back to the form before you flipped it, and that's the one you want to flip over. Because if you flip this one, the end product, you're going to have to re-rationalize, and that's just a big mess. So go back to the original fraction and rationalize, or flip that one. Secant is the, re the reciprocal of cosine. So again, we had to rationalize here, but I would go back to the original cosine relationship before we rationalize it and then take the reciprocal there. Okay? Cotangent, it's the reciprocal of tangent, so I flip it, no rationalizing, and we're done. Let's try another one. This one's different. It says find all six trig ratios of this triangle. Well, Okay, it's all it tells me is the tangent. So you have to remember your relationship. Tangent, if you remember, is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is O adjacent. So I put these relative to my angle theta. The opposite side is a 4. The adjacent side is a 9. Now I use Pythagorean theorem to find C. Okay, so 4 squared plus 9 squared equals C squared. 16 plus 81 is 97. So C is the square root of 97. And that doesn't factor into anything pretty, so we're going to leave it into the square root of 97. So now we run through the ratios again. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You must rationalize. 4 squared to 97 over 97. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, rationalizing. Doesn't reduce, so we're okay. Tangent is 4 ninths, they told us that. Cosecant, it's the reciprocal of sine, so remember, go back to this one, flip that, and that is your cosecant. Secant is the reciprocal cosine, so go back to this one. And that's your, cos that's your secant. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So 9 over 4. Now typically I do these in a different order. I go sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. So they're just side by side. You can do them however you want. You just have to do all six ratios. All right, I want you to try this one. Don't let the square root scare you. You can do it. We'll try it when you get to class.